Thank you. Don't be giving me any of these Republican microphones. The Dr. Art called me about two weeks ago and told me he was having a small gathering of students who wanted to talk to me and what I consider coming. That's why I'm dressed like this. I had no idea he was talking about four or five hundred people, but I'm very, very pleased to see you. From this university have come some of the great leaders, not only in Louisiana, but in the rest of the nation. Judges, legislators, doctors took pre-med here and went on to medical school, politicians, public servants, people who serve the rest of the nation. And you have a proud heritage of which I'm very pleased to have some association. Many of my friends graduated from here, including my grandson who finished law school here uh, just last year. And I just want you to know that those of you who are too young to remember, there was a time when efforts were being made by, I never understood. Conservatives, of course, wanted to merge Southern with LSU to save money and, of course, to cull out the black students. Let's just put it like it is. Unfortunately, they were joined by some ultra-liberals who thought there should be no such thing as a predominant in black college. And people who are in this building now and who remember those days will know that it is I who took the position. No, that is the greatest predominantly black universe. I'm very, very pleased to be here today because this is the first time in my long career that I have met Dr. Gray when he wasn't hustling me for money for the band. <laughs> to wear a hard day. Hate to see him because he always wanted something, new uniforms, new this, new instruments, new that. I kept telling him one day, I said, why don't you ask for something for yourself? Because I can tell you no, I can't tell the band no. But I'll tell you what, I'm proud to be here and to say to you many, many times I've used and heard and I've benefited from one of the greatest marching bands in the United States to be back here tonight. I heard a story about an old lady who lived in a little shotgun house. And every morning at sunrise, she would get up and face the sun and say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And every morning she would have a different theme to take, talk about. Praise God for taking care of me. Praise God for this or praise God for that. She lived next door to an atheist and he was always telling her, oh woman, you're a fool. There's no God and he isn't going to do anything for you. Why don't you just behave yourself and take care of your own self? And she didn't pay any attention to it. One morning she got up and she said, God, I know you're going to answer my needs. I have no groceries. I'm hungry and I need something to eat. Please supply. The next morning, there were two bags of groceries on the porch. And she got up and she looked up and she said, Praise God, you heard my prayer and answered my needs. There are two bags of groceries here. The atheist said, Oh, woman, God had nothing to do with that. I bought the groceries and put them there. And she said, Praise God, he furnished the groceries and made the devil pay for it. Just like he cuts the others. But what he needs to do is to help this university like he helps the others. People talk about it. But that's all right. As long as they say things that aren't true, it doesn't matter. I worry about the time when they start saying things about me that are true. And then I have to worry about that. But I don't worry about what people say. And I'll give you a couple of examples. You hear from time to time that. Oh, Edwards might have been a good governor, but he stole money from the state. Well, let me tell you about that. I never, never was charged with taking money from the state. I was investigated about 20 times from very zealous prosecutors and from a very zealous news media. But none of them ever suggested that as a reality. And it just isn't so. But better than that, let me tell you something. In 1986, I wrestled from the federal government a $600 million 
oil and gas settlement over a pending lawsuit. What did I do with the $600 million and put it in my pocket? No, sir. I took $60 million of it and gave the teachers of this state a one-time pay raise because they had been overlooked for some time. Are there any teachers in the audience? Any of you old enough to remember that? That was in 1987. What happened to the other $540 million? I had it dedicated in a special fund for higher education. your chancellor will tell you, this university every year, like all the other universities in Louisiana, gets a stipend from that fund for enrichment programs, for needs in the, uni in the university campus. And now that fund has grown to where it is a billion, two hundred million dollars.